First, what is local care? Local care is everything outside the main hospital. And I think um, both nationally and at the STP level, it's recognized that that's something we need to develop very robustly over the next few years if we were to meet the demands or the needs of our local population within financial envelope that NHS provides us. Our key aims, obviously, uh, heavy emphasis on prevention, care closer to home, Give the patients enough information and support to look well after themselves. And intervention at early point, uh, which is much better qualitatively and financially as well, both for the patient and the system. So these plans that we've developed, we have already gone through a listening process. Uh, we had uh, a questionnaire and we had events in March as well. And we took, listen to you, what, what you wanted and what your concerns were. Uh, and these are some, some of the things that you did want. More emphasis on mental health, stronger GP services, end of life care, etc. And some of the concerns that you had was around you know, staffing, workforce, funding, again, mental health services. I must say that on both your the warns and the concerns, you're quite spot on. And uh, those are the points of emphasis for us as well that we start to think about local care. So that, that was very helpful. And I'm hoping that we'll get more input to shape our thoughts. Before we go to the plans, I think it's important to go through the challenges that we face in Kent. A population rise of nearly half a million demographic that's changing, which is good. People are living longer. That's a vindication of good health and social services. Um, but it poses its own challenges. More people have more long-term conditions that we have to manage, uh, and they have to manage as well. Um, mental health is rising, and prevalence is rising, and one in four will have a mental health problem at some point. And we need to really think, are current services geared up for that or not? And yet there are opportunities. So four out of 10 emergency admissions could be avoided. Um, evidence shows that uh, there are currently 1,000 people in hospital beds who don't need to be there. There are workforce challenges. So the point I'd like to emphasize is not about more investment, I think there's a lot of potential for redesign, smart working as well, to <clears throat> realize some of the efficiencies and productivity to meet the needs of the future. I think our emphasis will shift substantially on prevention as we go forward. I think this is one of the missed trick. Um, you get much more life, many more lives saved when you work on prevention rather than intervention. And I think we get carried away by the gizmos of modern, modern medicine. And in the past, perhaps, we have missed the trick of prevention, um, especially when you're planning health at the population level. And the investment has been probably <coughs> skewed at the deeper end rather than the front end. And perhaps we need to just rethink the whole issue and emphasize more on prevention. So we're going to emphasize in our plans heavily on prevention and self-care. I think that's another trick that we've missed in the past, empowering patients to understand their own condition, giving them the support to look after themselves. That has huge qualitative advantages for the health system and the individual as well. And somehow, again, it's been a quite medical-centric approach that um, we have adopted in the past, and we need to shift, and how we do that in the future would be an interesting challenge, but we must do that. Uh, I can give you loads of examples. I'll just pick random, let's say a patient suffering from heart failure. A simple trick of asking him or her to measure the weight, and the moment it goes up to notify someone, prevents a hospital admission. What happens now? They come in touch with us when they're breathless. 
that's a stage too late. They end up in hospital. And those are simple tricks that were missed in the past. Just a bit of support, a bit of education, a contact to the patient when they're worried they can bring someone can prevent a lot of admissions. And I think self-care is something we need to emphasize strongly on. So just giving the foundation for our local care strategy at four levels, general practice, clusters, and I'm going to talk a bit about that as well, local care hubs and West and wide services. Each setting <coughs> will provide a different level of services which are complementary to each other rather than duplicating. I'll go through that one, one by one. Let's talk about general practice, the bedrock of local care, I would say. Both you value the doctor-patient relationship, that kind of human relation based on the ethos of care, compassion, and medical excellence. You value it, we general practitioners value it as well, and we've fought hard to retain that. And I think going future, absolutely, general practice needs to be much stronger than present. Um, so that our whole plans are centered on making general practice strong. Now, we know there are workforce problems. We need to make general practice resilient. But we are almost in a cash 22 state at the moment, and somehow we need to be smart about it. There is workforce problems because people are not coping with the workload. So people, doctors are retiring early, people who graduate go abroad rather than work here. And we need to reverse in a way that more people are attracted to work in general practice. And it, there's a role for recruitment, but it takes nine years to train a GP, but there's smarter ways of working as well. And I think that's where the three things, cooperate, collaborate, and combine, make a lot of sense. That we need to pool our resources. Each individual practice needs to talk to each other, share workforce, employ technology in a much better way. Look at the spread of the workforce. Does it have to be doctor for everything? And then perhaps we can start to attract people, and then the inbuilt residents will start to creep in. So we're already looking, and combining doesn't mean merging. Combining means combining our resources. So you'll have your local general practice, for sure. But they'll be much well connected to other neighboring practices as well, to share resources. Evening and weekend GP appointments that has come loud and clear both in local and national service, um, and we are working towards that as well. But I think it's important to emphasize that 54 out of out of 60 practices already provide some kind of extended hours. Cluster. So I was talking a couple of slides before about <coughs> practices working together with each other and. When I'm talking the future, it's already happening now. We have seven clusters in West Kent. The practices were geographically aligned are coming together and planning health on a population basis rather than a practice basis. <clears throat> they are beginning to look together at high risk patients who need a lot of diverse workforce to look after them. So we have already commissioned teams, uh, multidisciplinary teams, wrapped around these clusters. These teams consist of complex care nurses, specialist nurses, district nurses, social workers, mental health, dementia nurses. They all come together, wrapped around practices, and we deal jointly with complex patients in a multidisciplinary team meeting. And I think there's some very exciting technology that's making this happen at the moment. The first rollout uh, of that is already happening in Tunbridge and Morning clusters. But, um, and I've been quite involved in that part of the work. It's been hard implementing on the ground, but it's very satisfying. And now, patients who need us are visible. We intervene at a much earlier stage. We have a combined plan. <coughs> Instead of just a GP looking after them, firefighting all the time, a GP is supported by four or five different 
health and social care professionals. And the focus is to keep people well at home. So this clustering is already happening um, with some very good results early on. Mental health. I don't think you can ignore that as I said. One in four people will suffer at some point with mental health illness. And I think there are a number of things where we can improve services, especially about around acute deterioration. So rapid access, more liaison psychiatry at the front of the hospital. Children's services, um, we've already decommissioned the children mental health services, um, which is due to come live from September as well, which has got a much improved service spec or offering than the past. Again, emphasis on prevention would be very important in mental health. I think if you intervene early in mental health, give that support of counseling or early intervention, you prevent a lot of morbidity at a later stage when it's too late. And I think a lot of people, if you analyze their cycle, you could almost infer that had support been provided in an early stage, this would not have resulted in a much greater suffering to the patient, but huge financial costs as well to the system. And I think again, we're missing a trick there in mental health. And uh, we need to move the emphasis from secondary care mental health services, which is the pre predominant way of offering these services, to how we can move things early on in the community. I think I'm kind of the penny now to talk about social media. I'm conscious of time and um, I, this is a listening event and I really want to make sure I hear from you guys in the room but I just wanted to say and um, my name is Penny Southern and I work for Kent County Council and I'm a director um, in uh, adult social care and I just wanted to um, assure you how important and how significant the role of social care is in any local care plan and to assure you that we're working um, closely with our partners in health but not only in health we see very much a partnership with our voluntary sectors and our private sectors who work in the community and a huge amount of emphasis on prevention and well-being in the community um, i'm not going to talk through the slide it's just really important for you to show that um, we really want to work together and not only we really want to, we actually have a strong and good track record in Kent County Council working with our health partners and I've led teams um, over many years working um, co-located and integrated um, in services for learning disability, disabled children and in mental health. So we want to build on that what is already a strong partnership going forward. Um, we're working on a strategy for social care that aligns with local care and really have three themes, but clearly putting the person at the centre of everything that we do. And it is all about promoting well-being, promoting independence and supporting independence. And really, uh, in, with what, reiterating what you're saying, that prevention is one of our key outcomes um, when we're working with people in local communities because it's not just all about getting to GP, it's about social isolation, it's around employment, good housing and good social activities. Thanks. Thanks, Penny. So the next slide is about Dorothy and Dorothy is an imaginary or a real patient. And just imagine Dorothy as someone who is 80 year old, has diabetes, dementia, heart failure lives alone. At the moment, the care is mostly reactive and happens when things go wrong. It's inconsistent, it's discoordinated. And I think we need to move from that to where we, there's a proper care planning for the patient, or Dorothy, that people are involved and Dorothy herself involved in and that's beginning to happen in the new culture of cluster working and NDT working, which I was alluding a moment ago. That she's able to maintain her independence. There's a whole multidisciplinary team wrapped around uh, who looks after all the diverse needs, social health, housing, health. That she, she has got simple mechanisms of access, a single phone number for any needs she has. And she doesn't need to go to the specialist in 
secondary care, the specialist services virtually or directly is provided to her at home. That's how it should work in the future, and that's where our whole planning is. Uh, we are working on that planning. So this is just an illustration how we're planning to change care from present, which is uncoordinated and unplanned and reactive, and the hospital becomes the safest place for her to go to somewhere to a place where it's coordinated with her consent, with her full knowledge, and works around her. Quickly, a word, a word about hubs. These are new physical infrastructure in the community to shift services for secondary care and provide additional services in the community as well. So the first infrastructure, obviously, is GP practices, and these will be hubs. Just to give a bit of what might be in the lo local hub, there's a list of services. Uh, that And that's just our initial thinking. We haven't decided where and how many. Uh, we need to do a detailed piece of work again with public consultation, et cetera, to <coughs> reach to that conclusion. But these are some of the things that we based um, in a hub. So you've got practices, clusters, and these are the hubs, which are new physical infrastructures. And then services across West Kent, I'll pass over to Ian to talk more about it. Very briefly, um, some services will need to be provided across the whole of West Kent and uh, in, in particularly urgent care services, my colleagues will be talking about them in a moment, but, in, but especially beds. Um, you, know quite, you know well in Seven Oaks we have a community hospital, the hospital has beds. Um, the judgment we have at the moment is across the whole of West Kent we probably need more beds rather than fewer. Um, but we need them in facilities that are modern, up to date, and of the right scale and quality to, in a sense, to deliver high quality services for the next 50 years. We've got a set of community hospitals in West Kent that have served us really well over the years, but actually some of them are beginning to age. So we've done some work in Edenbridge, and we've, we've come into sort of, we've moved through the consultation phase to a decision, and we're now starting to that. We've got to do some work around Tunbridge Cottage Hospital because that's a leased site and that lease expires. <laughs> We're going to have to do some work around Seven Oaks and the facilities here because that building is beginning um, to get a little tired. It's good, it's a great service, um, but it probably won't last 50 years doing the same thing. So we need to do some work on that. But we need more of those sort of facilities, or more facilities rather than less. And one of the things we will be doing uh, as we go forward on this is coming out and very specifically engaging with the communities around Seven Oaks to look at actually what are the options and how do we do that. Um, right, the next one. Um, so, where, where will all these facilities be and, and when will we build them? Don't know yet. We need to talk with you about it. So, specifically, as I said, for Seven Oaks, we'll need to come and engage with the community around facilities around Seven Oaks. We've just completed a review or are completing a review of all the buildings we've got. So, 60 general practices, all the buildings that uh, KCHFT own and the facilities. We're working with district councils to see what services and facilities they've got and with Kent County Council because one of the things we're very conscious of is we've all got buildings and that should be much better if we started to share some of the resources so that you can go to the same facilities to get your health care and your social care and potentially community facilities as well. Um, so, so that's all right. Um, we know, what the, we know the population growth, we know the areas where, where the council are giving planning consent to build new buildings, uh, new houses, we know the areas that are gonna grow, we know the needs of the population. We are just starting to do the work to look at how we build an infrastructure. So as I say, specifically for Seven Oaks, means there will be a piece of work to talk with the local community that once we've been through this stage of the process, we'll come out and do that as a much more focused piece of engagement. Okay, back to Sanjay. Thank you, Ian. I'll rush to the next slides because I've been hurried from the sides. Um, the three strands of good local care would be the right plan, the right workforce, and right technology. And we are working, we have a whole plan of technology which will deploy over the next few years, hopefully to help uh, us working together in a multidisciplinary way, but also to enable patients to better look after themselves. I think um, these are the last couple of slides. What does it mean for you? More self-care, 
better access to GP services, more services in the community. I, I think uh, just to conclude, um, necessity is always the mother of invention. I think this perfect storm of demographics, resource constraints, workforce problems have forced us to think. And I think if we do it right, uh, good will come out of it. If this is some smart design, some smart working with a bit of investment, I think we can provide a much better service. So I think if we get it right in the future, you'll hopefully feel a different landscape, new buildings, better technology, multidisciplinary workforce, but for you as well, hopefully you feel more empowered to look after your needs. Hopefully there's a multidisciplinary team looking after your diverse needs with their diverse abilities. And hopefully the NHS, the social services and voluntary service come with a combined common offer to you rather than confusing you along five different routes. I think I'll stop here. Yeah. So we'll have questions at the end, um, but do keep a note of anything.